and welcome to the Contractor's Compass, presented by Web Insurance, your dedicated partner in navigating the complexities of insurance for 1099 contractors. I'm your host, Nathan Bush. In each episode, you know we dive into the essentials of insurance knowledge and strategies that empower 1099 contractors to safeguard their business, avoid unnecessary wealth transfers, and thrive. Joining us are seasoned professionals, insurance specialists, and thought leaders in the contractor and insurance industry. Together, we tackle the processes of this issue in insurance and understanding the liability to optimize coverage for maximum protection and value. This show is specifically crafted for your most pressing questions on your mind, covering everything from pinpointing the right insurance product to implementing risk management practices that bolster your bottom line. For ongoing insights and strategies tailored to 1099 contractors, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel or visit www.webinsurance.com. Now, let's dive into our wealth of resources. We've got them in the links in the show description. You can check those out as well. And I'd invite you, if you have questions today, you can go ahead and submit them. I will be uh, available to answer some of those questions and to help you out. Uh, after the show, if that's whenever you chime in with those questions. So feel free to submit those online. All right, guys, I got a uh, story I'd like to share with you, and then I'm going to bring up a guest. Our guest is a seasoned specialist when it comes to insurance. They don't like in this industry to use the word expert, so I'm not going to use the word expert. But he has a wealth of knowledge he's going to share with you. Uh, You're not going to want to miss the special guest. However, I do want to share with you this quick story. So Uh, you know how life gets busy and my career is no different. I have a family and my wife and I, a couple of years ago, were looking for a house that had a place of respite. And we came across this house with a pool. We felt it was necessary for us because we just needed a place where we could chill out and relax during the summers. You know, we had visions of that shimmering pool, the perfect place to invite our families and friends over to create priceless memories I know you guys know that that aroma that comes with sunscreen and splashing water. I'm talking about this on a day when it's like extremely cold outside. The roads are covered with snow, and I just can't wait for that that summer again. Well, being the busy folks that we are, you know, thanks to my darling wife, her high flying career that she has, and my chalk block full speaking schedule engagements, we decided to hire a company to keep the pool to keep the the pool in its best state that it could. We dove deep into the internet and we fished out what we felt was the best pool company we could possibly find. They had great reviews. And after some careful analysis, we zoned in on a specific company. Their introductory services were commendable. And the pool school guy, well, (laughs) he could have easily been mistaken for Matthew McConaughey. Just had that voice. It was a, a great experience initially, but then after some smooth sailing, there started to be some bumpy water, some waves that came in. And we decided that just like any normal frugal person would be, we would try to save some money because this wasn't the cheapest pool school. And we thought we would save some money by switching to a different pool company, to a different pool contractor. They were less expensive. The other company came with a good reputation and a promise of keeping our pool looking cloudless as the summer sky. So what happened? Well, they kicked off pretty well and our pool Uh, They started getting our pool ready for the summer. My daughter was excited. Her cousin was excited. But then they dropped the ball. No one showed up that second week or the third week. And our pool started to look more like a cloudy day than it did those blue skies we were thinking about. We didn't want this to spoil our summer. And we don't have deep pockets to just be able to fix whenever the pool turns into the swamp. So what did we do? It was getting close to Mother's Day. And it was was looking worse and worse and worse. Eventually, we switched back off of that old company and went back to the tried and true company that we knew and we believed in. After that week of broken promises and nobody had showed up, two days before Mother's Day, at least the initial pool company came back in to save the day. And we realized that saving a few bucks had cost us our peace of mind. We're talking today with Mike Webb of Webb Insurance. Hey, Mike, what's up? Good afternoon. How are you doing today? Uh, doing great. And the, Mike, I wanted to tell this story of these pool contractors because this is kind of like insurance. 
Sometimes I think people have this tendency, they think that they're going to save a nickel, especially in a market like what we've faced here recently. And instead of understanding the importance of somebody who's actually skilled and knowledgeable about what they do, I know we talk about this in team meetings, but how do you feel about this with this market that's going on? Well, the market is unprecedented. We have a, uh, a hard market right now to where there are many challenges, um, not only in personal, commercial insurance, other areas, but it, it, it's a scenario to where so many people will look and, and price is a big deal, but sometimes it's not pricing alone, right? So if somebody's renewal were to go up or there's a new account and we're looking at it, uh, we want to be very conscientious about coverages and what do those coverages look like and, and what are you getting for, for the dollars being spent? And sometimes it's the unknown things that get you, right? So somebody might change and they change their homeowner's policy as an example or something like that, or it could be a contracting policy. And if you're not getting the same coverages, it's, it's a problem. And it's really comes down to each firm, how they handle it. And we handle it very seriously to where we want to be able to make sure those coverages are there that when you make that change or we handle a renewal and you have something specific to the company that comes up, it could be an endorsement that has to be there for you as a contractor for additional insureds. It could be things to uh, work with other contractors or the language in your policy uh, fits for the certificates of insurance. And those are seamless and they go out on a timely basis. There's lots of things that come into play. Absolutely. And we're talking with Mike Webb today, guys, from Webb Insurance. He's the owner and president. But Mike, you've got a litany of credentials that follow you. Would you mind sharing with everybody a little bit about your background? and how you came to understand your expertise specifically in this contractor's industry? Sure. It's, uh, I grew up in the industry. My, uh, my father and I were in an agency together, a direct company agency for one company for a while. Um, and we went through some cycles of seeing things to where rates would go up, we'd lose clients, things like that. So we started pursuing the independent channel. Uh, so that's when we, uh, you know, I got set up into an independent insurance agency. We look at that. We look at the, you know, how we handle things through the other companies. We're trying to really set this up on an independent basis because if we're doing that, we're really looking at the best interest of the client because we're taking care of you. It's when when I obtain my designations that I have Charter Life Underwriter, Charter Finance Consultant. You know, a lot of people, hey, those are those are like industries for the financial services industries and things like that. I'm like, well, that's part of it. But a couple of those courses and a lot of the practical information and knowledge that I have is risk management. And risk management, guess what that boils down to? It really comes down to insurance. And every business, just like every household, has a financial pyramid. And the foundation of that financial pyramid is what? It's protection. It's insurance. And that is just vital when you start thinking about it to protect your bottom line. Yeah, that's extremely interesting. And your background and credentials are, I, I've not come across anybody in the insurance industry that has your level of understanding of not only the wealth management piece, but the risk management piece. And so uh, it, it, it's important because when we talk about contractors and we look at a contractor's business, whether you're a general contractor or whether you're a real estate agent and you're a contractor, there are certain aspects of your financial plan, of your risk management that have to be looked at in order to make sure that we don't have major wealth transfers that happen. And we'll talk a little bit more about wealth transfers on this show. But one major wealth transfer that I have seen in my life is this movie Money Pit. Have you ever seen this show before, this movie before, Mike? Yes, I have. In, in the movie Money Pit, it just goes to show you that anything that can go wrong will go wrong if you don't have the proper protections in place. The, you know, the famous quote is, this house is a disaster, but it's got potential. Well, sometimes insurance policies have potential, but they're really a disaster. And people keep putting money into bad insurance policies when they don't really have the proper protection. I, I remember talking with you a couple of weeks ago, and you were sharing with me a story of some gaps that you had saw that were in a insurance policy and how there was tremendous exposure for that business that you were talking to. Would you mind sharing with me again, kind of the details of that? So it can remind me as we get into this conversation. 
Well, there's there's several things to look at. I mean, you you have to look and say, okay, hey, I, if you're a contractor, you're a business owner, you know, you have your office, you have your employees, you know, you have you can you can kind of run it down to your balance sheet and and say, hey, these are the things that I have to take care of, and you have to make sure that that protection is in place. So, not just the general liability, but you know, you get into inland marine coverage for your equipment and you know, if uh, if you're leasing or renting equipment from somebody, you have to have an endorsement for that. You have to look at your your fleet, your commercial autos. Um, you know, when you, when you start stacking up all the coverages and say, do I have what I need? You know, there there's some times to where we've seen, no, you don't. And, you know, I can think of a, a couple of examples specifically to where I run into a really good contractor. They do a good job. You know, they come in, they do a really good job for you. And you end up looking at the coverages that they have, and they only have a fraction of really what they should. Um, you know, so you can imagine that if you're going out there doing a job, and maybe somebody says, ah, "I'm not going to worry about you know getting um, insurance on my equipment," and you know, what's it cost? You know, for equipment this day and age. I mean, you have a few key pieces of equipment. You know, whether it be a uh, you know track loader or front end loader or various other things, and all of a sudden you're at 100, 150, 200, 250,000 dollars worth of equipment. That could be a, a big deal because what happens if, yeah, it's stolen. You're supposed to get the jobs over the next two or three weeks. You know, that's that's not a small amount of money for most contractors. Um, on the larger side of that would be if you're underinsured. You know, many, many people think that you could have a million dollars of general liability insurance as a contractor, and that's plenty. Well, maybe. Uh, you know, you have to look at this and say, hey, if I go in there and I did something to where it's negligent on my company or my employee's part and it caused a deal, it caused a fire, it ended up doing something else and a place is really damaged from that. What happens if that million dollars doesn't cover it? You know, so that's the kind of in-depth conversation that, you know, the agent with, you know, the owner and or the manager of the uh, contracting company, they need to really come together to have a good solution. And, you know, t pay attention to, hey, what's going on with the past five or 10 jobs that you did? What's what's happening with the jobs coming up so you can get a feel and, and really get a good trusting relationship going to where you can provide what really what that company needs? Yeah, Mike, I you know, I've been in the property management industry for a number of years and many 1099 contractors operate under the assumption that just basic insurance is enough, that I can just get a liability policy because it fulfills the, the responsibility to allow me to generate revenue until they face a lawsuit or a claim, you know, and then they're really in a position where did they have enough coverage? What might happen in a lawsuit if somebody doesn't have enough liability coverage, Mike? Well, that's not good, right? So all of a sudden, if, if you know, somebody were to be sued and they do not have enough coverage, um, you know, there are other people in our world, professionals, such as attorneys, that's, they work with you to set up a company and try to protect you, but you know, all the assets of the company and, and what you've done for your livelihood can be at risk. And, and, and that's not a small thing, you know, so you can imagine, you know, something that costs $500,000 up and beyond your coverage limits. And all of a sudden, you know, that's gone. And maybe that was an asset of the company. Let's say you had five hundred thousand dollars in the bank. You get sued. Uh, your your liability limit, limits are capped out, and then they tap that. You know, five hundred thousand dollars at ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty years at interest. Uh, you have to do the math, right? That's to me, that's a massive problem. It's definitely a massive problem. You know, there's a lot of misunderstandings around policies. I know contractors often sign up for insurance policies without fully understanding the terms. And that's what really leads to these gaps in coverage. I, most people, when they're going to buy insurance, they think I'm going to buy the minimum amount of insurance that I need. Is that the is that a, a responsible way to approach insurance, or is there a better way to approach insurance, Mike? You know, the I had a mentor of mine many many years ago. You know, he, he said, you know, when you take a look at life, and no matter what you do, what does the minimum amount of anything infer? or the least effort, you know, um, you're only going to get out of something what you put into it. So maximum output, maximum result, maximum work, maximum result. 
you know, I'm not telling you to go out and you have to spend a ton of money to get the right policy. What it comes down to is spending your money wisely, getting the coverage that you need and make sure that you have the right protection in place. And you know what, if it's $300 for an endorsement and you're like, ah, I don't know if I really need that, talk through it with your agent because at the end of the day, that could be some of the best money that you spend. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one of the things that I remember you telling me, Mike, is what if everything you thought to be true, Nathan, about insurance turned out not to be true? When would you want to know? And I, I find that to be so important when it comes to how we talk about dealing with our insurance policies from a 1099 perspective. There's insurance policies out there right now that are that are available for contractors, for 1099 contractors that need health insurance. You know, can you right. talk a little bit about like this opening and transition that you've seen even at Web Insurance and how important this new insurance products and in, in place is for contractors? Absolutely. We're, we're really excited about this piece. Um, and years gone by, the firm, our company has really used third parties to handle that side of the health insurance side, whether it be group or individual supplemental coverages, things of that nature. Uh, we've put a team into place to where uh, group benefits will be handled through our agency now internally. Um, uh, Gail, who is going to be the director of that department, we're, we're really excited about this. And, you know, when you when you start looking at a contractor, it's there's the traditional way of thinking, then there's the out-of-box way of thinking. And to your point, Nathan, yeah, to what you don't know, it, it can hurt you, right? There's an unintended consequence of doing something without doing the right research. And that's where this team, uh, Gail and her team, when you look at the benefits, I say, hey, there is a specific way for 1099 contractors to maximize that health coverage compared against traditional options. And we have to look at a couple of things or not just the coverage, but hey, what about some, maybe some tax benefits in that? What else can be there? And you know what, if that can end up adding up to a little bit here on the bottom line to where it helps what the contracting company and your expenses to your income and hey, guess what, your profit looks better. That's fantastic. And you ended up seeking out the right advice from the right person. We are, we are very excited about this piece in, in our department here in, in 2024 as we move forward. You know, that's one of the things that I have found to be a struggle with most people in understanding insurance is that they take a I'm going to buy what I need type approach without knowing what they really need. And so, you know, underestimating the need for comprehensive risk management is a major mistake that a lot of people are making, especially if you're a 1099 contractor. So I know it's a major mistake, Mike, you know, it's a major mistake, but why is a holistic approach important versus buying something online or what have you in that direction? Well, it's, you know, when you, when you take a look at being a consumer and we're, we're getting things thrown at us all the time and whatever it is from a commercial to a pop-up on your screen when you're on the computer to whatever, hey, you know, buy this and, and that kind of a thing. And we've seen people that have done that to where they bought something online and we they've actually told us, well, we bought it online, thought it would be the same, and then all of a sudden it's not. And, you know, again, that's that's the point to where knowledge can kind of hurt you because you didn't do the deep dive into it. That's where your agent, your representative can help. You have an advocate on your side to really help to you to make those right decisions. And, you know, at any given time, you know, you think about, you know, open up any bill that you have. Right. So we all know federal and state tax and there's local tax, but every single bill that you have, take a look at it. There's usually a tax attached to it. And, you know, so think about it from that standpoint. What is the unintended consequence of paying a tax over a long period of time that maybe you didn't necessarily have to pay because you took the time to investigate something, had a professional help you, and say you had an agent work with you from our firm in multiple areas of your company. You know, what if that can end up dropping, you know, not just five figures, but it can be six figures plus of money into the future, into your pocket, just by working with us over a long period of time. That's what matters. Um, it's, it's really changing people's lives and doing it in a positive fashion. We're here to help people. It's a mission statement. We have it on a plaque in our, in our wall here in the, you know, at the office. 
uh, one upstairs in the office and one downstairs in the office. We want to ever be able to see that because honestly, we, we, we do. We want to treat people just like the way we want to be treated. Yeah, this is this is a great discussion, Mike. And uh, I, I really appreciate it because there is something to be said about sitting down with an agent, going through your business, talking about all of the different potential areas of coverage and letting that agent put together a holistic plan. And I'm going to take a second and break to a quick little web insurance commercial. For those of you that are have been on the, the show here for a little bit, or you maybe you're on the fence about web insurance, hey, let a web insurance be your guide. They can review your current coverages. They can make sure you have the correct policies in place at the most affordable prices. And what their clients love is that every year they proactively shop your insurance to ensure uh, to ensure you're truly with the most affordable carriers with the most appropriate coverages. From contractors to real estate agents and investors, let web insurance be your guide. Look, they have tailored health and wealth solutions for 1099 contractors in the real estate industry. Just check out www.webinsurance.com. That's web with two Bs, insurance.com. All right, Mike, we're back. So, <clears throat> you know, we're talking about this holistic approach. And when you talk about a holistic approach, can you talk about some tailored approaches that you've taken in the past? in order to help get contractors more affordable insurance for better coverage. So tailoring an insurance policy versus just picking one off the shelf. So that's the beautiful part of an independent agency and, and how we approach that. So, you know, I'm not going to be one to name any companies that competitors and what have you, but sometimes somebody will have a policy, they come in, you start going over what they have and it's almost like the previous agent or the current agent that they're working with, you know, they're putting the proverbial, you know, square ball or ball into a square hole, whatever you want to say it. And, and that's a problem. And so if we can end up looking and knowing what that company needs, knowing of that industry, right. And that's, we do, we, we work within multiple industries when we think about coverage. So whether it be, yeah, a contractor, a garage shop, um, a retail shop, so on and so forth, professional services. You want to uh, you want to make sure that when you evaluate where they're at, what they have, what do they need, if anything is is missed, you know, you you know, you could use an example of, you know, what happens if somebody didn't have the right amount of cyber liability insurance and they have a heavy online presence, you know, that's that's a, that's an issue, especially with the growth in technology and the potential threats out there today. Uh, what happens in the event that you have employees and you had a situation that was contentious with one, um, you know, you let them go or something happens and all of a sudden you get a letter in the mail from an attorney, they're suing you uh, because it was wrongful termination. Well, there's coverage for that. Uh, you know, when you, when you end up getting into, you know, stacking coverages the way they need to be stacked, it's, it's very, very important uh, it's it's not just a purchase. Um, you know, you can say that about a lot of products in the, in the holistic and, and the overall approach that we take. You know, I always have it in my mind. We have a 10 step process that we live by. And in that 10 step process, you know, that's how did you hear about us and what makes us unique when you're looking at us? What do you need and what? What are your top goals and priorities? And this applies to all areas of your of your planning, insurance being one of them as well. You know, so, you know, it, it's really thinking about it being so much more than just a product. Yeah. Yeah. And Mike, so many people, too, have a tendency to buy their insurance policy and forget about it. I know I, you know, I have done that with my own insurance as you buy your house insurance or your car insurance and you forget about it. You don't really want to think about insurance. Once you buy it, you kind of want to put it out of sight, out of mind until you have to write the check pretty much every month or once a year. But but I think it's important that people dust off those insurance policies and they gain an understanding of what's actually in the policy. Because I know that there's a number of different carriers that, you know, I, we beat them on price and they're still missing certain things in the policy. Can you give me an example of a time where you had a client who was a new client or an existing client that brought you a policy that they had with somebody else? And we were able to get them more coverage at a more affordable price. 
this can happen in a number of areas, you know, so I can, I can either look at, hey, it's it's the property and casualty insurance policy. So, you know, what I'm talking, the general liability or the workers' compensation, I can't tell you the number of times to where on a workers' compensation policy, somebody comes in and they show it to us and they're carrying some of the basic limits. Um, in other words, a, a level of, of coverage in my eyes that's not enough. And they just don't understand or have not been told or talked to enough about it to where it only costs a little bit more money to increase the coverage, maybe to even two, three, four times the amount of the basic level of coverage that they would have. You know, um, there's so many times we've seen, you know, general liability policies that are issued at 300,000 or 500,000 to combine limits. And, you know, when you end up looking at it, you know, what, if you're going to go do a job for anybody significant, they usually start at a million dollars. And if you're doing a job for a municipality or somebody like that, it could be they require not only but one million, they could require four or five million or more. Um, but it's not just doing what they tell you to do in that contract. It's, hey, OK, I need this. But what are the coverages should I have in the event that something goes wrong? I could also say this, that from a independent contractor and thinking about being an owner as independent contractor. I'm an owner of a company. You know, you have to think about, hey, wh what about that key person that I have? And, and should I be doing something special for them? Um, what happens if that foreman who's directing my key, a key person in the firm goes down and I need somebody else? What does that mean to me financially? What do you need to work out? That's where all of a sudden, you know, it, it just the lipo goes off with a lot of people when we're sitting down with me like, yeah, I get that. I've had that happen. I've actually heard a number of business owners say, hey, I've, I've had that actually happen and, and it wasn't good. So again, it's a conversation, right? That, that, that's, a, that's really what I want to instill to people. It's communication. When you're going in and talking to an agent, make sure that you're talking to them and bringing things up. Hey, when they ask you, tell me about your company and what you're doing. Get into the detail. Uh, it, it's very important. So tell me a little bit about some of these claims that you've heard in the past. What's like the most bizarre claim that you've had uh, had to deal with as an insurance agent and a broker? Um, bizarre or extreme? <laughs> Either. Uh, so, you know, we, we have insured a lot of different properties and businesses over the years throughout the eastern region of Missouri. Um, one of the more extreme losses that we've seen, I'll, I'll talk to a couple of them. Uh, one on the property side is to where we had a multi-story building in the St. Louis area that during the winter had pipes break at the upper floor and it flooded every single floor of the building. Um, the last time, and I never really looked at the final on it, but the last time that I looked, it was 700,000 plus in damages. Um, when, you end up taking, when you end up taking a look at um, maybe it's a, a worker's compensation scenario. I'll never forget that we had a business owner who had a trucking company and they had a guy who, you know, stepped down out of the cab the wrong way as he was getting out of the vehicle, uh, ended up hurting himself pretty bad. Um, so that, you know, that one by itself, just on that one incident was a hundred thousand plus. And then, you know, the owner finds out, I mean, he actually had that kind of similar injury in the past. So, there's another piece of that in the workers' compensation with the state of Missouri called the second injury fund. People have to be aware of. But at the end of the day, when you look at it, it actually went on and on and on. And, you know, they didn't see 100,000. Again, it was way past that. You know, the numbers continue to climb. Uh, we've also seen to where, um, never forget, we had a, had a uh, this was on the personal side, to where a young driver, a uh, single mother, a uh, young driver goes around this uh you know, the, the circle drive and, and hits something wrong and, and careens off and hits another party. It was a really bad accident. And they were just lucky enough. And thankfully, they were insured with this. I mean, we had an umbrella liability policy. You know, they had a million, one million five hundred thousand dollars of, of total limits. And, and it took care of them. if they wouldn't have had the umbrella liability policy, uh, there would have been another two or three hundred thousand dollars. It's like, OK, one of either that comes out of somebody's pocket or Hey, agent, you didn't do your job. Um, I'm going to have to talk to you about your professional coverage because that's an issue. Those things come up, you know, and um, 
those are probably more extreme examples. Uh, unusual claims happen all the time. Um, I'll never forget a client that called me up in a frantic fit over in the Florissant Hazelwood area to where uh, they're like, what do I do? What do I do? Because he said, I, you know, I can hear things, you know, kind of running up in the ceiling. And it was yeah. actually uh, a family of raccoons ended up getting into the top of the, into the building. And they did, they're very destructive. And I bring this up because this is why you want to have everything sealed up as much as possible. Because in that case, when vermin get in like that, guess what? That can be an exclusion in your property insurance policy. So uh, you have to think about those things. So you know, there's four or five examples there of things that have happened on an extreme and an unusual basis. Absolutely. You know, implementing a comprehensive risk management strategy, including regular policy reviews, risk assessments, and the integration of technology to monitor and mitigate risks has become way more important today than it ever has before. I know that some organizations are having difficulty even getting insurance written because of the claims that they've had in the past and issues that have gone on. Would you mind speaking a little bit to this whole concept of risk mitigation, annual reviews, and making sure that your your organization is doing everything it can to, to ensure, make sure that you're insurable? Yeah, you know, this is, <clears throat> to Nathan, to your point, this is a, um, an unusual time. Uh, a couple of us that have been in the industry for some time, you know, this has been one of those markets in the insurance industry to where you look at it and go, it's almost like it's a first for us. We've been through some similar things, but really this has been one of the more challenging environments this past six to 12 months uh, that we've been in compared to anything I've seen in my career. And, you know, when you think about this quote unquote hard market, um, companies are, are doing what they're saying, well, you know what, we have enough policies in the state of Missouri or, you know, we have enough policies. We, we really, we have companies on the personal insurance side that are no longer taking new clients right now. We still have plenty of companies that are. But, you know, what's that tell you? Well, the, the industry has been faced with some high loss ratio issues the past few years. And when insurance companies have high loss ratios and they're unprofitable for multiple years in a row, um, that becomes problematic. Uh, so it's going to restrict the marketplace down. It's in, and so when there's not enough, what competition, you're going to get into some of these increased rates scenarios that we're seeing today to where all of a sudden somebody may have over the past 24 months, they've seen, they could have seen a hundred percent rate increase. You know, they started out at $2,500. They went to $5,000. Um, a more extreme example of this would be in the commercial insurance industry to where, we're seeing um, associations like, you know, condominium associations, homeowners associations to where they're having to make a difficult decision to where, hey, do we continue to have a master association policy? Uh, we have we have become aware of at least three associations in our area, uh, the greater you know St. Louis area to where they're no longer carrying master association policies. So that dramatically changes everything they're doing in every single unit owner. That, uh, that actually owns uh, a unit in those complexes have to do something differently. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, so that's just a couple of examples. You know, it's, it, it also comes to light that there's, you know, it brings back a memory to me on the, dis, in the world of disability insurance. And you might go, well, how does that apply to an, a 1099 independent contractor? Well, I'm going to tell you, I mean, if you're the goose that laid the golden egg, you better be insuring yourself and you have to think about yourself that way. And if you're a business owner, you could have great benefits for the team. But, you know, if you're taking good money out of a company, for example, and the company's profitable, doing fantastic, and you go down from a partial or total disability, that's a problem. There have been, there have been cycles over the past 25 and 30 years where uh, the, the market for disability insurance companies became so restricted to where only a couple players remained, and it really changed the landscape. We've gone, we probably have seen three of those if I think back to probably about 1990. And, you know, right now there's still some good uh, disability insurance market carriers out there for the various uh, things that people do. Um, but you never know when that market can change. And, and some of those historical lessons that we've seen that I've seen, you know, they're good, uh, good lessons to be taught. And uh, remember, so uh, that really helps our clients out whenever they come in and talk to us. Yeah, I mean, Warren Buffett has this famous quote where he says, risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. 
And right. you can take some risks by going online to try to get insurance. You can take some risks by working with agents that don't really understand the contractor market. Or you can reduce that risk by going with an organization that understands risk and specifically for you in the 1099 contractor market with web insurance. And I'll take a second just uh, before we wrap up here and plug one more time for you to let web insurance be your guide, guys. They have tailored health and wealth solutions for 1099 contractors in the real estate industry, and they can review your current coverages and make sure that your current policies in place are the most affordable prices. And what their clients love about them is every year, remember, they proactively shop your insurance to truly make sure that you're with the most affordable carrier for, with the most appropriate coverage. From contractor real estate agents to investors, let web insurance be your guide. Head on over to www.webinsurance.com to get a quote from us if you have interest and have a better understanding of your current insurance policy. All right, Mike, this brings us, we're now at about 36 minutes, and we've been talking this entire show so far about risk management. We've talked a little bit about uh, general liability insurance, making sure that you have the right coverage, taking a comprehensive approach. We've talked about the unique aspects of 1099 contracting, how there's specific health insurance products and how understanding how general liability workers comp and a number of these others when packaged together can help reduce and offset costs. We've covered a number of different things in this show, but you have got years and years and years of experience. People are only hearing the tip of the iceberg from the stuff that you've experienced over your career. When it comes to this concept of wealth transfers, and I really want to dive into this right now because this is so critical and so important. With the cost of inflation going you know, rampant within things, the interest rates going up on people's mortgages, uh, tax bills, I don't, I don't know what's happening with taxes right now, but it seems that some of the tax cuts may expire here shortly. I don't know, you watch politics, they'll come up with different answers on what's going on. Talk a little bit about this concept and help the audience understand more about how insurance really helps offset some of these wealth transfers. So wealth transfers, when you think about your family, you think about your business, anything that takes money out of your pocket is considered a wealth transfer. And either you're knowingly doing that. Hey, you know what? You have a, have one daughter, you have a couple of sons, for example, and that daughter is going to get, you're going to, you're going to even give a good wedding, right? You know, there's, there are priceless things that typically families will spend money on and you, you need to, um, you know, and then I'll sometimes make a comment when I'm sitting down with somebody who's just getting to know us. I'm like, Hey, you know, if you go down and spend a hundred bucks at QT and you do that, how many 2000 times in your lifetime at interest, what does that up? And did you necessarily need to buy those things? Um, you know, things that can hurt you, right? So, you know, some of the traditional ways of thinking, um, such as, is it necessarily the best thing to do to put most of your money you're saving into a qualified retirement plan? Um, it may not be, okay? Um, what you're doing is deferring, you're actually postponing that tax into some future date, some unknown tax environment, uh, because taxes change. Uh, we're currently in a cycle right now to where, you know, the current laws will sunset in the not too distant future. And we have to be thinking about, hey, you know what, if, if somebody's doing well, whether they're accumulating, we just talked about this in a training meeting this morning, I was I was giving, is, is somebody accumulating and building money and, and in the prime of their life? Um, a lot of people could say, hey, I'm going to retire and I'm 65 minutes in the prime of my life, <laughs> however you want to view it. But you're in a different, you know, 45 to 65, you're in a different position. And somebody who's 65 and they're saying, hey, I'm starting to think about retiring and those things, you're in a different position. And, you know, wealth transfers can happen to everybody. Matter of fact, at any given time, this, this number, now I did this research six years ago and I need to actually follow up on it. But we're generally speaking hit with about 184 different taxes at any point in a given time. I'm sure that's probably gone up since then. And when you think about wealth transfers, taxes, when you think about the insurance, you think about, hey, you know what? I have to make a decision. How am I going to pay for college? You know, it, you know, how am I going to do that? You know, when especially if you have multiple children and, you know, just stroking the check isn't necessarily the best thing to do. Uh, it could be in a given cir circumstance. I just grab it like this. There could be 10 households lined up in front of me and each and every one of them are going to have a little different 
thing that they have to have done. All their goals and desires and their wants and the way that they think about things are all going to be different. Whether it's insurance, it's the financial marketplace or whatever it is, they're going to have all different ideas or ways that they want to handle things. And, and that's why, you know, I made the comment the other day to another advisor and I said, you know, the, we want to we want to talk about 10 percent of the time and listen, 90 percent of the time, because I want to hear everything about you as a prospect or client to us to where we can help you to maximize what you're telling us, put you in the best position that we possibly can in order to do what? Stop some of those wealth transfers from happening. And if we can strategically do that over 10, 20, 30 years, and we found eight wealth transfers at $1,500 a piece, you know, and that's $12,000, $12,000 a year over 20 years at 5%, we can do that math on the time value money calculation. And that ends up being a tremendous amount of money. And uh, it, it's it's something that uh, hey we just really improve somebody's life when we do that so uh, you know that's pretty awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've got one more thing I want to talk about, and then we'll wrap up the show today. Uh, but I want to talk about this concept of circle of knowledge. So we all have this circle, and we'll call this all of the knowledge that exists, and we'll carve out you know let's say our person's really really smart. They know about this much information, right? of all the knowledge that's available for about insurance and about their their understanding of what to do. Mike, can you help me walk through this illustration of circle of knowledge to give people better prepared in understanding their insurance? Absolutely. So, you know, to define the circle of knowledge, there are things that you know to be true and things that you, you don't know to be true. And, and, and that's only a small sliver like Nathan just carved out. It was, it's like a pie slice as compared to the blind spots that you have. So I often uh, describe it like this. You're driving down the road and you can see things in front of you in the rear view mirror and the side mirrors, but you still have blind spots. And it's those blind spots that get you, right? So even some of the things that you think that you, that you know to be true, you're going to have a little sliver in there that even though you thought it would be true, it's not true necessarily. Um, you know, I can say, hey, you know what? If, if, you're, a, if you're a surgeon, you know what, what you're doing. But you, do you know what to do to go out there and, and, and work in something that a contractor can do, such as trenching and making sure that they're putting lines down properly for your electric or whatever it would be? No, I mean, you don't. That's why you hire other people to do it. So, you know, when you see this blind spot, you know, we want to be able to help people with that to really be able to say, hey, you know what, we're, we're taking care of most all those issues. I, everybody I talk to, I, I tell you this. You know, and, and this is a big piece of, of, of what I believe in. If I tell you I'm going to get it right 100% of the time, you know that's not true. I'm going to do all I can to get it right 100% of the time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen because things come up. But we do want to help you to understand those blind spots, how to stop those wealth transfers and put them back in your pocket. And that puts you into an empowered position, whatever it be. But when, you th when you're thinking about insurance and the gaps, that can be pretty major. Absolutely. And guys, that that's a wrap on today's show, empowering session today of Contractors Compass. I'm Nathan Bush, your navigator in this ever-changing landscape of 1099 contractors. Let's remember this. Our professional journey mirrors a well-crafted mosaic where every piece represents a choice, a challenge, or a triumph. Together, these pieces create a masterpiece of success and resilience and fulfillment. Before we part ways, Ensure you've joined our crew by following us, subscribing to our newsletter, and pressing subscribe on YouTube. This way you won't miss out on the wealth of knowledge we share on this live cast. If today's insights ignited a spark within you, spread the warmth by sharing this episode with a peer, or invite them to join the next gathering we have in person or online. Until we meet again, let's continue to carve out your niche elevate your standards and inspire those around you to strive for excellence. And let's embark on a voyage, possibly forge a path for over 25,000 uh, thought conscious value driven entrepreneurs in this process. So from St. Louis, I bid you farewell, stay motivated, Mike, make sure you stay safe out there on these roads. And remember if what you thought to be true about insurance ended up not being true, when would you want to know? Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Mike. You guys have a good afternoon. You too.